Hi everyone, this is Lady Vintage Bags here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a handbag review on my Louis Vuitton Concorde handbag. So this is a vintage Louis Vuitton bag. This was from 1995 and it's in the Epi leather in the color Toledo Blue and it has gold hardware. So just starting with a brief overview of this bag. So as you can see here, we have a top handle bag, structured rectangular shape, an S slot closure, leather lined, no back pocket. So this bag here, when I looked up the origins of the name, it's named after a square in Paris. So it does have historical origins in the name of the bag. And I believe a lot of the Louis Vuitton bags do have locational origins for their names. So I'll just tell you a little bit about my purchase story for this bag. So at the time I was actually looking to purchase a Louis Vuitton Monceau. And this was in 2009. And at the time, the prices I was finding on eBay Australia were ranging in the 700, 800, 900 mark. And I just couldn't find a deal that I was happy with at the time. And I was browsing Instagram and I saw this particular bag come up with an Instagram seller named Ian Carlos. You can also find his YouTube channel, which is called Ian Carlos TV. So he's based in Japan and he's an Instagram seller who I believe is also doing live sales now. So this particular bag, as you can see, is not a nano bag. It's not a mini bag by any means. So in terms of the size, going across, it measures 27 centimeters. And this works out to be 10 and 3 quarter inches in terms of the height of the bag. We've got about 19, 20 centimeters, and this works out to be eight inches. And in terms of the width, now this is the bag empty at the moment, and it's about five centimeters, which is about two inches. When this bag is full, it can be stretched out like so, and that's about 11 centimeters which works out to be about four and a half inches. So when I purchased this bag, I got it for about 387 Australian dollars, and that included the PayPal fees and the shipping. So I thought that was a really good price, especially compared to the price of the Monceau at the time. Now, what really drew me to the Louis Vuitton Monceau was this giant S-lock, which is the same on this bag. So I thought, okay, this was a good alternative to try. Now, as you can see here, it only has a top handle, and this is quite a long top handle. So you can wear it on the crook of your arm, or you can hold it like a handheld bag. So it's quite comfortable either way. I'm not having to maneuver my hand or my arm through there. That's really comfortable. This particular bag, the exterior was in really good condition. So as you can see, the Epi leather is still quite structured, it hasn't lost its shape. There doesn't really seem to be any scratches on the leather. And you can see the LV is embossed here in the corner. So it is quite a subtle bag in terms of logos. And on the hardware, you can see there's Louis Vuitton engraved here. There's the words Louis Vuitton there, and there is a keyhole too. So this bag can be locked with a key. Unfortunately, the key was not part of the purchase, so I can't demonstrate that. You have glazing all around, and the glazing on this bag is in really good condition still. So I can't really find too many cracks on the glazing. One fault I would say is probably the handle. As you can see, it's quite skewed to one side, and I think that's because of the way it's been stored over the years. I've tried to hang it up like this to keep it straight, but no matter how long I hang it for, it eventually just goes back to this skewed shape. Because it is a bit skewed, the leather on the handle has become a little bit wrinkled, and the glazing has started to crack on the handle, so that was quite unfortunate. 
Now let's look at the details on the hardware on the handle. So you can see here there's two screws on either side and that is a flat head top. I have not tried to unscrew this so I don't know how easy that is to unscrew. And the back is quite plain, there's nothing there. So if you're someone who did really want to wear it in a subtle way, you could just wear it this way. And then there's no logo at all. Now in terms of the interior, the interior was not in as good condition as the exterior. So we can see there's some bubbling here on the leather. It has two main compartments which are quite generous in size and we've got two zippered compartments. Now unfortunately these zippered compartments did have peeling and stickiness so I did have to try to clean them out. These two main compartments here were not made of the same leather that peeled or become sticky so they did not need any cleaning out and they're in really good condition actually. If you are looking for the date code on this bag it is found on this inner corner here. So if the bag is facing me, then it's on the right front inner corner. The date code on my bag reads SR1905. Using the vintage date code convention, SR stands for made in France. And the month is the first and third digit, which is one and O, so that's the 10th month and the year is the second and fourth digit, which is nine and five. So it's the 10th month of 1995. Now this bag does say Louis Vuitton made in France, but it's not overly visible. So it's just there. If you're looking for where the stamp is on the bag. Now the bottom looks like so. So you can see this is the bottom of the two compartments here. So they can be quite stretched out. Uh, in terms of smell, it does have a little bit of a vintage smell, but nothing too odorous. The hardware on the zipper heads are still really beautiful and shiny. So the detail is quite nice. Now in terms of what fits, so I'm not a minimalist in terms of my daily essentials. So I use a full size wallet. This wallet is from the Australian brand Oriton, which many Australians would be familiar with. Phone. Power bank. Lip product. Hair clip. So there we are. There's still room to fit more items. Close is fine. Looks like this on the side now. There I am. Now because it only comes with a top handle, I do like to wear my bags crossbody. And the hardware on this handbag does allow me to attach a crossbody strap. So I'm just going to demonstrate mud shots using different crossbody straps to show you. So just starting out, here's the bag handheld on the crook of the arm if that's how you like to wear it. So it looks gorgeous like that. Not always practical to walk around with a bag on the crook of your arm, but if you're doing something leisurely, going to brunch, going to high tea, going to an event, it's definitely really beautiful to do it that way. If you need to be hands-free, I'm going to demonstrate with a, this is a generic Vachetta strap, so it's not any particular brand. I got this from eBay from a seller based out in China. So this hardware seat has a lot of room. So I'm just going to attach it to the back of one side of the hardware. Sometimes it is a little bit tricky depending on how much room the hardware on the strap opens or allows you to play with. And now I'm going to do it to the front of this side. I do that to try to even out the weight distribution so it doesn't put too much pressure on these chaps on the bag here. Okay, so now this is it as a long shoulder bag or as a crossbody bag. That's really comfortable, really practical. If I wanted to do a short shoulder bag, which I can with this strap, because this is a three piece strap, like the Speedy B strap, I can just do short shoulder, like so. So as you can see, the Toledo blue goes quite nicely with Machetta. It's a nice match. So the next strap I'm going to show you 
is a gold chain. So this is a short shoulder bag chain. Oh, sorry, a long shoulder bag chain. This strap is too short to go crossbody. So as you can see, that looks quite nice as well. So up close, because of the gold hardware on the bag, it goes well with a gold chain strap. So it does take some maneuvering to attach and detach the straps, depending on how big the clasp is on your strap. The smaller the clasp, the more maneuvering it will involve. Now this is a faux black leather strap. So you can see the black with the Toledo blue. So that's it there as a shoulder bag crossbody bag. So you can play around with a variety of straps on this bag and that's one of the advantage of it. So just some pros and cons of this bag for me and these are just my own personal opinions so these pros and cons might not work out well for you. So number one it's an all-weather bag. As you can see there's no vachetta here. Now this bag comes in Epi leather and monogram. The monogram version again does not have the shedder leather but instead it has the vintage treated leather so even the monogram version is also an all weather bag. The other colors of epi leather it comes in are black which is also called noir or Kenyan fawn which is a shade of brown. All of those colors and the monogram are all beautiful so any color you get you really can't go wrong with. So all weather bag, tick. It has a structured body. I like structured bags, so that's a pro for me. It's quite roomy inside and has multiple compartments. So that's a tick for me. Now some cons with the bag is that it does not come with a detachable strap. So if having this top handle here is cumbersome for you, then that may not be suitable for you. And also it does not come with a crossbody strap. So that's another con is that you do have to add your own and the constant attaching and detaching of the strap may be too annoying for some people. Now the structured body of the bag for me is a pro, however for others that may be a con. Some people do like more pliable mushy bags and not these boxy structured bags. In terms of the lining, because these do come with that lining that eventually peeled and became very sticky in a lot of bags, so it does require cleaning out which takes time and effort and materials. So some people do not want bags that need to be sparred or dealt with in that manner and again a lot of vintage bags do come with some odor some very odorous some just a hint of an odor where you have to really stick your nose in the bag but that is a deal breaker for some people too and finally no back pocket so if you're someone who needs easy access to your phone via a back pocket then this bag may not be for you now to my knowledge this bag I could not find any special order Damia and Ben versions, but if you know of this bag coming in any other colour besides the Toledo Blue, Black or Noir, or Brown Kenyan Fawn, or Monogram, let me know down below. I'd really love to know. I've done a Google search, but I could not find any. Now, in terms of current prices, a recent search on eBay Australia I did shows that these bags are selling for between 500 to 1500 Australian dollars. Now that of course depends on the condition of the bag and whether or not you get the extras like the key and the dust bag or the box. That's where the large price variation comes from. But I paid $387 back in May 2019, so I thought that was a really good deal. So let me know in the comments down below, is this a bag you'd consider getting or is this a bag you already own? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Till next time, have a nice day.